Hi, Liz. How are you? I'm good. So excited to be here with you. Yes, I know. I know you're a busy, busy lady with a little toddler that is like putting productions on all the time, probably <laughs> at home. <laughs> he sees Zoom and he's like, hi, he comes <laughs> running to see who's chatting. That's but you're awesome. also super busy, so. <laughs> um, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all for the good for the industry, I guess. We're all figuring it out, that's for sure. That is true. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna help people figure, figure out, like event planners and event professionals for the next like 20 minutes or so, figure out what they need when it comes to tech and digital skill set, how to, you know, sanity, et cetera, to get them through the next decade, not even just 2020, because um, I think I, I think they need some sort of guidance. So let's start off with um, event planners. And, and this is a, a tough question, but I'm gonna ask it is like, is event planner the right title anymore for those that are designing and creating experiences like across different venues, virtual being one of them? No, I mean, I think event planner is just kind of the bucket. If you don't know what else to say, it's like, I don't know, they're somehow in the event planning business, but um, you know, I mean, we're marketing people at this point, we're technology people, we are concerned with attendee experience and design. I mean. I, I tell students that I work with, the best thing about the events industry is you could love anything and still find a role for it in the events industry. It could be a super financial, like you just love numbers, you could find something in the events industry or it could be all about, you know, there are people who focus on sustainability, who fo there's just, I mean, to me, that's just such a generic term. Yeah. <laughs> you can use it, but I don't, most people would look around like, who are you talking about? <laughs> right. So does event planner, so, so the next question is, do you, do you propose then that they become very, very niche and specific in what they're do, what they're doing? Like, like you said, their love, their passion for numbers, and they can do something that's financially, you know, oriented instead of just the catch all. Cause I feel like right now event planners, especially with this hamster wheel that we're in, they are a catch all. They're like cat herders connoisseurs and yeah. and you know they're just trying to make sure that the mute button is not muted and that you know the speakers are not hyperventilating uh in in the green room and that the the sponsors are happy and know how to you know get the the leads and the roi as they would want so yeah i mean how 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 do you how do you propose that they like plan out you know, what they would want to do or really excel at going forward. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a proponent of niche because it's easier to market. It's easier to understand what you do and what you offer. And it's easier for other people to understand how to reach out to you, especially if you're, you know, a lot of people are building their business on social media. They're using tech to, you know, get a wide audience. People are only seeing you for five seconds at a time. So they don't get a good picture. They're definitely, you know, if you're doing too many things, they they don't put your name with one word and therefore you're not referable. That's so for a long time I've been talking about that. But I think the virtual environment has accelerated that to a whole nother level because they're just there's just so many things that people are uncomfortable with. And now people feel like, oh my gosh, I have to go learn all the things. You know, I see all get a these certification. People, yeah. Get a billion certifications and take a million online courses. And, you know, but the truth is like, I keep referring, it's similar to, you know, AV companies. I never felt like I had to go out and get a degree in AV. I, I hire a great company that knows exactly what they're doing. And I know enough to know if they're good or not but that's been my role as an event manager. And then, you know, with virtual, it's the same kinds of things, but there's, I mean, we're opening a whole new world of roles with virtual and hybrid that really, not that they didn't exist, but they certainly were not popular a few right. years ago. Now they're too popular. So, so yeah. the next phase is like, you know, how do you nail down the skill set that you need and then roll out like a, well, first and foremost, a succession plan, because I think people, you know, it was on their to-do list, <laughs> but it, <laughs> they didn't get to it. 
But so, so when we talk about skill set, let's talk about like the digital skill set. What are the primary digital skills that you feel event professionals should have? And what can they bring internally or outsource as well? So it's like two part question. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it is part of figuring out what you're very good at and what you enjoy. There's always that combination of things that like, it'd be great if it was both of those things. Sometimes they don't match exactly, but you're really good at something, but you don't necessarily love to do it. <laughs> um, but I think figuring that out and then zoning in on that. So for example, now with virtual, we have virtual MCs. Like this is a, a different role than what we were doing with in-person events. There's always been in-person MCs. Uh, there are people who I think are just really built for it, who are very good at that kind of digital interaction. You're interacting with global audience. You're often doing a lot more time filling than you would do in an in-person event. You're not just introducing speakers, but you might be interviewing people for hours on end in between sessions and right. So, you know, that's a role that like, if that's something you really love, then you kind of pursue that. I think the challenge is that virtual and then as we move to hybrid, these add so many layers of extra stuff. You know, when you're planning a hybrid event, you're essentially planning two events right. that have to have enough touch points to still make it seem like it's one event, but have completely different experiences. So you not only need more people and more skill sets not only more skill sets, but you need double the amount of people. You know, everyone's saying like virtual is so cheap. It's like, it's not going to be very cheap once people's expectations go up and, and suddenly you have a lot more to do. So, I mean, virtual makes us, we have to market differently. Yeah. We have to understand obviously technology and how it works, what the limitations are of sitting in a meeting this week with people who are just going back and forth about this 10 second transition between two segments. And it was just a lack of understanding. It was like, could we slide a video in there? No, because then there's extra five seconds on each side. You know, <laughs> can we do this? Can we do that? It's like, you have to kind of know enough to know, oh, we can just combine this into one session this way. And then guess what? The 10 seconds disappears. You know? yeah. So those details, I think you do have to have a basic understanding, but not everyone has to become we were laughing earlier, virtual event expert on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big believer of virtual event expert guru. It's a, it's a learning process. It's the same with event planners, like event planners. It's, it's not a, a done deal. Yeah. Right. Um, you, you, we, we learn it the hard way or we learn it the fun way or the accidental way. And you're like, oh my God, you know, I did this and now I can do it yeah. like in a different setting. So the other skill set is, is the marketing because, you know, <clears throat> as a planner, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to design something and then you're going to have to put this other layer on it. I call it the, the six layer dip because like you have all these layers that yeah. I'm kind of hungry <laughs> at the moment, but you have all these layers you have to consider. And even if you're an event planner, it's not one of those things where you say, oh, not my thing, not my job. It's your job, you know, like. So, so the elements of event planning, you, you also have to have the, the know-how of marketing, especially digital marketing. Um, so, so, or you can also say you're going to have to not work in silos anymore, which is a bigger business conversation, right? Yeah. So, cause we've always known event team has always been on the side has always, you know, not had a very strong voice. So like, how do you see that um, changing or needing to be changed in the next decade? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that your two options are, they're both, it can go either way. Either yeah. you have to have a much broader experience, you have to be able to talk about, you know, how the event experience impacts the marketing and then obviously how all of that impacts sales and you have to be able to tie it together for people. Mm -hmm. um, or you're going to have to work more collaboratively. And so if you're internal at an organization, I think that's going to mean, you know, that the departments have to start working more together. And then for those of us who are independent event professionals, it means we're working much more deeply within the organization. A lot of times now when we're working with companies, we, we have a lot of touch points at our client, a company, instead of just kind of we report to one person and we do everything with them. Now it's like, there's no way you can pull that off. You have to have 
your hands in lots of different departments. And I'm also seeing the collaboration, especially amongst independent planners. Um, I've had the opportunity in the last eight months to work with lots of independent planners that I just have known about, but we just haven't had the ability to work together yet. But we have different skill sets and you can kind of piece together your dream team of yeah. other people who maybe would have been considered competitors and, and deliver something better for all of your clients. You know, there's something that you each bring to the table. So I think it, I, of course, I always uh, lean towards the collaboration route as compared to just learn it all yourself and be, you know, better at talking about it all. But there is that level. You do have to be able to talk about these things and understand yeah. how it all fits together. Well, I mean, there's a set of interpersonal skills that I think planners need to also evolve and to um, to have going forward. So like, I, I know event planners are control freaks and are overachievers and are, and this is not in a bad way whatsoever, but like the, that whole aspect lends itself to, you know, what can I do better on, on, on a professional development side? So like the delegation, that's a must, you know, the, co the, the creative collaboration again. So, so there's what, what other skills do you think like interpersonal skills or like the soft skills, not necessarily that have to do with event planning as we know it, but yeah. that you think event planners, because you know, independent, you, you know them all like, so you see it, right? What do you think they need to work on? Well, I do think communication is one, you know, yeah. especially because um, there's so many different mediums of communication and we're used to kind of certain parameters and those have been pushed away <laughs> completely. Um, another thing is flexibility. There's just so, there's only so much we can control. And this yeah. has been, you know, a serious personal lesson for me in 2020 like I like to plan everything out, control everything. And then 2020 has proven time and time again that I have literally no control over anything that I try to do. On a um, personal side, on a professional yeah, side. Yeah, all around, all <laughs> around. So I, I keep telling my husband, I'm like, that must be what I'm supposed to take from 2020 is the lesson. I haven't learned it though. Like how to let go. I think that's really hard for <laughs> professionals. But, you know, we were talking earlier about virtual, you know, 30 seconds of downtime at a virtual event could lose half your audience. Whereas 30 seconds in an in-person event would be nothing. Like people haven't even realized you're late. And that's a big difference. It's going to happen a lot. And so that flexibility, it immediately makes an event planner feel like I'm failing. Oh my gosh, something's going wrong. We're losing, you know, um, but you just have to somehow learn to roll with it. I wish I could say I figured out how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still the one obsessing, like it's not going my way. <laughs> but um, I, I agree with you on that. I think, you know, it, it is, it is definitely a lesson learned. I think people um, within our industry have to also uh, trust the process, which is very hard for them, you know, yeah. especially because they are very much into, into control. So, um, but you do the, the, I know people like to use the word agility and that you have to be agile um, and you know just, just be on the ball more than you were before. I like the, I like the word fluid myself, but that's, that's, that's just me. Um, and I, I do think that there's gonna be a great need of collaboration, but not only collaboration internally uh, within team members, but also the need to outsource so that you're depending on other people's expertise and bringing that in so that I think, you know, one of the things, this is another lesson learned within our in events industry is we were very much in tunnel vision and we put all our efforts and all our energy and ideas in the annual conference. And then that was it, you know, Yes, we had, you know, other opportunities like let's go virtual, let's do a webinar series, let's do a podcast, which is all great ideas, but yeah, a lot of them have did not reach that. So therefore they're trying to scramble to learn it, do it, succeed at it now. Um, yeah. And they should not be doing it alone. So 
So let's talk about technology because that's one of your favorite things as well. So um, I, I love the session that you did with like the whole sound of music uh, theme. Those are a few of my favorite things. A few of my favorite things. So when it comes to technology and, and the boom is absolutely incredible. Reminds me actually of Event Mobile Apps, a boom that we went through yes. uh, <laughs> seven years ago. Yeah, was exactly. it seven? I think it was like, no, it was like 10 years ago. So like there we go. Maybe that's the sign. So now we have to learn where the mute button is and now we have <laughs> to learn. Um, but when it comes to tech and when it comes to the, the modern event planner skill set, um, what, what do you, what do you advise them to do? So I advise to not focus so much on the tech, although it is important. We have to remember the value that we bring to our clients is really in designing a good experience for our attendees, our sponsors, our speakers, whoever the stakeholder is. And I think that because people are overwhelmed by the technology, they've immediately, I've heard so many event planners say, I have no idea what I'm doing with a virtual event. Okay, take a step back. You, you know how to plan an event. Now, yes, there are obviously components that are different for virtual, but that doesn't mean you're completely unprepared. And so that's where I feel like the panic towards all these certifications and like just ridiculous amount of professional development, which is all good, except that I think it makes people lose sight of the fact that they still know how to plan an event. And I think that's the key is I think we do need a lot more people in the industry who are thinking outside the box about not taking, you know, I've heard this phrase from a billion people of in-person experience and shoving it into a virtual box, but really just focus on what you know well, which is how to engage an attendee, how to we know that, you know, roaming through a 2D experience, in my opinion, not engaging. We wouldn't do it in an in-person event. Why are we doing it in virtual? So what are the things that have worked in in-person that we could translate? So for example, things like intimate dinners, those were working. Those kinds of concepts, interactive experiences, that stuff works in in-person and there are really clear translations to virtual that would help us be successful. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from a tech perspective, it's understanding, like we have to be the drivers of what we expect for the experience. And then it's the same as we do with any other vendor. It's the research, does this company fit my needs? And if no, then you move on. If yes, or if mostly yes, you pursue, you know, but I think we have to see the technology as that. The other thing is the technology, in my opinion, I'm sure you might agree, really not there. So <laughs> there are not some- Not there yet. No. And I mean, that's because there have been companies that have been around for years and years and nobody cared about them. So they really didn't have the kind of funding and the, the attendee experience. Now we have pushed them to the limits. Like look at Zoom, everything is coming out. They, they were not built for events, but now they're building like registration and all these components. Yeah, Everyone is working overtime to build, but it's not really there right now. So you know, imagining that you're going to just like find the perfect tool and you're going to work with that for the next 10 years, like you used to do with your, you know, X companies contracts that you would get into for three to five years in registration or whatever you're not doing. That's not the world we're in. We're back to, like you said, 2010 with apps. You want to try it. You want to test drive it. You want to see, and then they're going to change so much between now and next year, you are going to want a different platform. Right. So it, you can't lock yourself too much into the different tech, but the tech skills are important regardless. So the how savvy do you think a, a planner should be? Because like I've, I've heard planners say, oh, I was on 70 different demos. And I'm like, why the hell would you do that to yourself? <laughs> like, honestly, why? Why would you do that? You know, after a while. And then there's all these Google Docs that are floating around and yeah you know, the interwebs of like all the comparisons and the check boxes and, you know, I, I, so on the flip side, what would you recommend that the tech companies can do to help the modern event planner then? Well, I think the tech companies, you know, they have to figure out for themselves. They have to niche. A lot of them look exactly the same. I could take the same website and just put a different logo and suddenly it's a different company. So I think, you know, differentiating themselves from the competitors is it's exactly what the mobile app business went through 10 years ago. It is. It's just, what are you doing that's different from everyone else? And why should event planners care about it? And you, once you clarify that, it's a lot easier to get that message across to people. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is good experience. People talk 
really, you know, our industry, obviously everyone is talking to each other. So I could have sat through a hundred demos, but if I hear one trusted planner tell me that they loved X company, all that goes to the waste. I, I, I agree. What are you spending your time? There are people who do this for a living who for years have been using different virtual platforms. Just ask them, ask people like you, what should I be using <laughs> instead of sitting through all of that? Um, so I think it's just a combination of things, but I think the tech companies really have to figure out what they're doing and just stop putting products out so that they can say they're in the virtual market. Yeah. I mean, one thing I also think that planners should be very um, diligent of, of the feedback loop. And so not only with their partners or providers like a tech company, but also with their stakeholders. So, you know, with the virtual experiences, it's open a golden opportunity where feedback is not a survey monkey after the event is over. So like ways of, of, of having the feedback open from like bi-directional always and doing that with their tech companies, doing that with their marketing, doing that with um, even with their attendees and their sponsors, et cetera, but also figuring out, okay, what kind of insights can I get from this? And then, and working on that. And there are some planners, I don't know if you agree. Are you a data person? Do you like data or do you like to ship it to someone? I'm not a data person. I don't like it. I don't, but it is the future for sure. I mean, we don't have to ask people how they felt because now we can see how many seconds they watched all each session. And there. yeah, I mean, it's all there. If they played Candy Crush during yeah. talking <laughs> right now, we'll know, you know. Exactly. But, uh, but so, so the, the, the thing is with that feedback, you base it on data, you, you get your insights, but it's also going back to what you were saying, the communication. So you need to go back and be able to communicate, you know, um, with your tech providers. Did you do this well, blah, blah, blah. But I think, I think planners, once an event is over, they're like, okay, I'm done, you know? And, and so I think that's, that's one skill that they're probably going to need to really work on is the follow-up because there's so many moving parts more than a face-to-face. -face. And like you said, doing a hybrid, I, <laughs> <laughs> that is, it, it's, it's not easy. So no, and I mean, I, I'm coming off of three back-to-back -back events. We just did one event per week for the last three weeks. So I definitely feel what you're feeling. And, and Thanksgiving is coming. It's just like, I just want to veg. You know, it's been an intense, intense year. But first of all, you know, there's all the follow-up, all the data. Everyone wants to see that. And so we know for our clients, we have to produce all of that. But then the other thing is with virtual, people have moved to ongoing programming. It's not, you know, we have one client who kept their ticket price, um, but was they now offer a year membership. So it comes with content every single month and you can pay per month. So it breaks up the pricing, but you're still paying $1,500 for your ticket. Um, and so in the virtual world, there's no end to it. It's not like, okay, see you next year. You know, now it's like, we have another event in two weeks. Oh my gosh, you have to like ramp back up. So I think a lot of brands are doing that though. The memberships, the annual programs, the continuing content. It's a different skill set. It's a whole different skill set. Yeah. And it never, you know, it's not like what we're used to where you can just kind of wrap it in a pretty bow and write a yeah. report. Anaheim is done. We're yeah. going to move on to see you next year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Well, um, so any last piece of advice that you would want to share with the planners, bring their sanity or, or, or like level of anxiety down a bit? They should enjoy the ride, to be honest, because it's not going to end. You're going to, yeah, look back on this and, and realize how crazy things were. But just like everything else, planners are very good when we collaborate. And I think that's the key everyone's missing right now. You don't have to be the queen of event technology. You don't have to know every single platform that's out there to be successful. Work with partners, talk to people in the industry who do it well, um, know what you don't know and work with people, collaborate, and you'll get a lot farther faster than if you just try to like take this all on your own. And, and I don't think having, you know, knowing a hundred platforms makes you more marketable. Yeah. I think it's really around the attendee experience. That's something we all have to figure out whether you've been doing this for 15 years or not the level of competition is ridiculously higher. Yeah. So, you know, we're just, um, you really have to focus there. 
Yeah, perfect. Perfect ending. Liz, thank you so, so much for this. <laughs> thank you. I always love talking tech with you. Yes, <laughs> talking everything. I think we yeah, saw anything. Uh, the industry challenges. So here we go. <laughs>